Hello. In all my time mining, I've seen quite a few guys, and to be honest, have been disappointed in quite a lot of them. Even then, the few that I've seen that are actually decent still leave out a lot of useful information. So, here I am, trying to rectify this. This series will be divided into three videos, Heart of the Mountain, Powder, and Gemstone Mining. The reason this is in different sections is because I am going as in-depth as possible in these videos, and if I were to make them into one video, it would be way too long and honestly an information overload. I've also split it so people who are already past a certain point, like people who are already done with Heart of the Mountain or Powder, can easily skip ahead. So, for the topic of this first video, the Heart of the Mountain. To unlock the Heart of the Mountain and enter the Dwarven Mines, you'll need to bring Rice and the Obsidian Sanctuary in front of the lift, ten enchanted ores of three types. There are ten types to choose from, but the cheapest are Enchanted Redstone at 1,960 coins, Enchanted Lapis Lazuli at 5,252 coins, and Enchanted Gold at 7,087 coins. All of these prices are from the bazaar and are subject to change. Then, once you unlock the Heart of the Mountain, you'll be awarded with one token of the mountain to spend on your tree. You can access your Heart of the Mountain tree by typing slash H-O-T-M, or by looking in the top left of your Skyblock menu while in the Dwarven Mines or Crystal Hollows. Right now, the only perk you can unlock is Mining Speed. You'll see that this perk can be upgraded with Mithril Powder. Mithril Powder can be obtained in a plethora of ways, but the only two that matter right now are Mining Mithril and doing commissions. Right now, the focus is on getting to a higher tier of the Heart of the Mountain. You can obtain Heart of the Mountain experience by doing commissions for the King. On screen right now is how you get to the King from the Dwarven Mines spawn location. Once you've found the king, click on him to open the commissions menu. Each commission will reward you with 100 Heart of the Mountain experience, 100 to 200 Mithril Powder, which you'll spend all of it on mining speed for now, and 5,000 to 10,000 mining experience. The first four commissions you complete in a day, reset at midnight on Eastern Standard Time, will give you a bonus of 900 Heart of the Mountain experience. Before I explain how to do commissions, I should probably explain the different mining stats. Mining Fortune is the chance for double, triple, quadruple, or like 20 times drops that you have. For every 100 Mining Fortune, you basically get one more of the base drops. So if you have 2,176 Mining Fortune, you'll have a 100% chance to get 21 times base drops, and a 76% chance to get 22 times base drops. Mining speed is how fast you mine a block. Since Minecraft's minimum measure of time is a tick, the time it takes to break a block is measured in ticks, 0.05 seconds in a tick, but you won't have to worry about that for the duration of this guide since you won't be mining things very fast. Finally, I'll explain pristine when that becomes relevant. The first two commissions you will get will be Mithril Miner and First Event. For the First Event commission, all you have to do is wait until any event happens. For the other commission, Mithril Miner, you'll have to mine 50 Mithril Blocks. I should say that the first four commissions you get are called Tutorial Commissions, because they are far easier than the normal commissions you will get. The two commissions after the two I've already described are another Mithril Miner commission, just with 150 blocks needed instead of only 50, and the final commission is Titanium Miner, which requires you to mine two Titanium. Titanium has a base spawn rate of 2% of the time after you mine a Mithril block. For the pickaxe, I would recommend using a Picanimbus 2000. 
The Piccanimbus 2000 has a bit of a price tag at around 300,000 coins per, but it is extremely worth it. If you can't afford to use them, I would recommend grinding another money-making method like Sand or Zealous until you can afford them. A Piccanimbus is so good because it gives an insane 1,500 mining speed with no Heart of the Mountain requirement. Sadly, there is a drawback in the fact that it breaks after 5,000 uses. For your armor, you'll want to use Glacite armor with flawed amber gemstones in the open gemstone slots in the armor. To achieve this setup, you can buy Glacite armor from the auction house for a total of around 80 to 90,000 coins. Prices may vary. Then, go to the gemstone grinder. How to get there is being shown on screen right now. and buy four flawed amber gemstones from the bazaar for about 3,462 coins. Prices, once again, subject to change. Finally, put your armor pieces into the gemstone grinder and click in the amber gemstones to put them into the armor. This all will give you a good bit of extra mining speed. After the tutorial commissions are completed, you will receive much harder commissions. In your first commission slot, you can receive the following commissions. Ice Walker Slayer, slay 50 Ice Walkers. Goblin Slayer, slay 50 Goblins. Mithril Miner, mine 500 Mithril anywhere. And then Mithril Miner, but in a specific area of the Dwarven Mines, which is mine 350 Mithril in a specific Dwarven Mines area. Titanium Miner, mine 15 Titanium anywhere. And then in another specific Mines area, Titanium, mine 10 Titanium in a specific Dwarven Mines area. In your second commission slot, you can receive these commissions. Goblin Raid, participate in the Goblin Raid event. Goblin Raid Slayer, slay 20 goblins during the Goblin Raid event. Raffle, participate in the Raffle event. Lucky Raffle, deposit 20 raffle tickets during the Raffle event. Star Sentry Puncher, damage Star Sentries 10 times. 2 times Mithril Powder Collector, collect 500 Mithril Powder during the 2 times Powder event. The areas that the specific Titanium and Mithril commissions can be found in are the Upper Mines, Lava Springs, Cliffside Veins, Royal Mines, and Ramparts Quarry. Using this image that's being shown on screen right now, you can see where all of the locations are. The Ice Wall is where you'll go to kill Ice Walkers, and the Goblin Burrows, titled Goblins, is where you'll go to kill Goblins. Now, I just listed a bunch of events, but what are they? Firstly, there are two types of events, Major Events and Minor Events. Major events happen every 20 minutes in the Dwarven Mines, and minor events happen randomly no matter if a major event is active or not. Major events include Raffle. Go to where the raffle is, either by teleporting to Old Man Gary via a chat prompt 20 seconds before the event starts, and then teleporting to the event via Old Man Gary, or going to where the raffle says it is at, which will be a specific location in the Dwarven Mines. Once you arrive, you'll see raffle tickets strewn all over the ground. If you collect these raffle tickets, then turn them in at the jukebox looking box before the event ends, you will have a chance to be one of three players to receive triple rewards from the event, and if you deposit tickets at all, you will be counted as participating in the event. The more tickets you deposit, the higher chance of winning you have. The mining experience that you get is 400 times your tickets given. The mithril powder is 25 times your tickets given. And the, heart of, and the Heart of the Mountain experience you get is two times your tickets given. Though, tickets given below 10 are set to 10 for these equations, and tickets above 40 are capped at 40. Goblin Raid. You get to the Goblin Raid the same way as you do the raffle, and upon arrival you will find a swarm of goblins who will attack players. Super Protectrons will also spawn, and will severely nerf your damage to the goblins unless killed. Each hit you land against a Super Protectron will count as one kill towards your final kill count. To earn a participation bonus, you must rack up at least 25 kills. If all of the goblins are not killed by the end of the event, every player gets half of the rewards they would normally get. Beyond participation and ending the event, getting more kills gets you no more rewards. The base rewards you get are 20,000 Mining Experience, 100 Heart of the Mountain Experience, and 1,000 Mithril Powder. Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind is a passive event that boosts your mining speed by up to 600 if you're looking in the right direction. How close you are to looking in the correct direction can be seen on your scoreboard. 
The white symbol means you're getting no bonus mining speed. The green symbol means you're getting 300 bonus mining speed. And the dark green symbol means you're getting 600 bonus mining speed. 2 times powder. 2 times powder is another passive event that simply boosts your powder gains from all sources by 2 times. Better together. Better together is a passive event that makes it so if you're within 10 blocks of another player, your mining speed is increased by 500 and your mining fortune by 50. Mithril Gourmand. Mithril Gourmand is an event that makes it so Don Expresso appears in front of the Dwarven Tavern in the Dwarven Village and demands players give him Tasty Mithril. You can get Tasty Mithril by going to the place in the Dwarven Mines that is shown in the chat prompt and mining Mithril. Don Expresso needs at least 200 Tasty Mithril for the event to give full rewards to all participants. If you give him at least 10 Tasty Mithril personally, you will be granted extra rewards. The rewards of the event are 20,000 Mining Experience, 100 Heart of the Mountain Experience, and 1,000 Mithril Powder. If Don Espresso isn't given the 200 Tasty Mithril required, rewards are cut in half. Minor events include Powder Ghast. Occasionally, a Powder Ghast will spawn in either the Cliffside Veins, Devon's Gateway, Forge Basin, or Rampart's Quarry. It is 100 health, but can only take one damage at a time. It actively tries to get as far away from nearby players as possible, and hitting it gives between 16 and 32 mithril powder per hit. I wouldn't recommend ever going for this event, because you need decent gear and a bow to effectively do it, and it gives extremely little powder, and also doesn't have a commission associated with it. Fallen Star Randomly, a Fallen Star will crash at a random location in the Dwarven Mines. Star sentries will spawn around the fallen star and can be punched for a commission. There are also things called commission milestones in the commissions menu, which give you rewards for completing a certain amount of commissions. The only thing you'll really have to worry about right now are the emissaries you get access to for reaching commission milestones. These emissaries will be in certain areas of the Dwarven Mines, it's shown where they are in the commission's milestone menu, and act as places to access the king from, so you don't have to go all the way to the king to get rewards for completing your commissions. Simply click on them, and they will open the commissions menu. You can also get extra commission slots from the commission milestones, but that isn't too important right now. When you reach Heart of the Mountain Tier 2, you will receive two more tokens of the mountain. Now, you'll want to spend these on Mining Fortune and Titanium Insanium. I would recommend splitting your powder about half and half between Mining Speed and Titanium Insanium here. Don't put any into Mining Fortune, as the drops you are getting from this right now really won't matter that much. When you reach Heart of the Mountain Tier 3, you will receive another two tokens of the mountain, which you should spend on Mining Speed Boost and Daily Powder. Daily Powder is relatively useless, and I wouldn't recommend putting powder into it at all, but it is useful to connect to Efficient Miner, which you'll get at Heart of the Mountain Tier 4. If you've reached the 100 Commissions milestone by this point and gotten another Commission slot from that, that Commission slot will give you the same Commissions as the first slot, as listed earlier. Now, the most important part of getting to Heart of the Mountain Tier 3 is having access to the Crystal Hollows. The Crystal Hollows is easily one of the most important parts of the Heart of the Mountain grind. The commissions in the Crystal Hollows give quadruple the Heart of the Mountain experience, double the powder in the form of gemstone powder, which you don't have to worry about until Heart of the Mountain Tier 6, and double the mining experience. If done correctly, the Crystal Hollows commissions can also be completed faster than the Dwarven commissions, giving an even further boost to efficiency. So, how do you enter the Crystal Hollows? Well, follow the path I'm taking on screen, and you'll find an NPC named Gwendolyn. Buy a Crystal Hollows pass from her, and you're in. You can enter and leave the Crystal Hollows via the minecart in your skyblock menu. When you enter the Crystal Hollows, you'll be spawned at a random spawn in one of the four biomes. The most common one is this spot in the jungle. Why is it the most common? I have no idea. It's probably bugged? <laughs> the Crystal Hollows is extremely unique because you can mine almost any block there, and it will disappear. Some regenerate, some don't. Now, swap lobbies until you've found the most common spawn location. Then, follow the route through the tunnels I'm showing on screen.
Structures randomly spawn throughout the crystal hollows, and one might have spawned in the way of this route. If so, try your best to get around it. Once you're through the tunnels, you'll arrive at the crystal nucleus, which is the one structure that generates in the same place every single lobby, with the center being at the coordinates 512x and 512z. In the crystal nucleus, there is an emissary who you can accept Crystal Hollow's commissions from. Be sure to change the setting from Dwarven Mines commissions to Crystal Hollow's commissions. The four main biomes of the Crystal Hollows generate around the Crystal Nucleus, and can all be accessed from the Crystal Nucleus. The biomes are all the same size, and each takes up about a quarter of the Crystal Hollows. The Magma Fields also generates below Y level 64 for the entirety of the Crystal Hollows. Crystal Hollows commissions work similarly to Dwarven Mines commissions, in that the slots 1 and 3 will only give you the following commissions. Hardstone Miner, Mine 1000 Hardstone, Jade, Amber, Topaz, Sapphire, Amethyst, or Ruby, Gemstone Collector, mine 1,000 of the specific gemstone. Chest Looter, loot three chests, including ones spawned from Hardstone. Team Treasurite Member Slayer, slay 13 Team Treasurite Members. Sludge Slayer, slay 25 Sludges. Yog Slayer, slay 13 Yogs. Automaton Slayer, slay 13 Automatons. Goblin Slayer, slay 13 Goblins, can't be done in the Dwarven Mines. Thist Slayer, slay 5 Thists. Slots 2 and 4 will only give you these commissions. Jade, Amber, Topaz, Sapphire, or Amethyst Crystal Hunter. Find a specific gemstone type of crystal. Boss Corleone Slayer, slay 1 Boss Corleone. So now, what do all of these things that I just listed even mean or entail? First of all, Hardstone is the stone block in the Crystal Hollows, mostly within the walls of the tunnels. It takes 1,500 mining speed to instantly mine it. Before I talk about gemstone commissions, I should talk about Pristine. Pristine is massive for mining gemstones for profit, but to be honest, it won't really matter at all to you right now. I'm just explaining it so that you know what it is. Anyways, what Pristine does is instead of giving you only rough gemstones when you mine a gemstone ore, it will give you both rough and flawed gemstones. Since it takes 80 rough gemstones to craft a flawed gemstone, this is pretty huge. It's even affected by mining fortune, just in a different way. If you want a detailed description as to how Pristine works, you can look in the Pristine page in the fandom wiki. Then, for the gemstone commissions, you can find certain gemstones in the different biomes of the Crystal Hollows. Jade generates in the Mithril Deposits, Sapphire in the Precursor Remnants, Amber in the Goblin Holdout, Amethyst in the jungle, Topaz in the magma fields, and Ruby everywhere. I would recommend using an armadillo pet to mine these gemstones. What an armadillo does is it will only mine gemstones if you meet the breaking power requirement to do so, which will be explained later in the video, but it will instantly mine them, which is huge in general, but especially for early to mid-game mining. Take note that it is a mountable pet, and you have to mount it for it to really do anything. To mount it, simply right-click on the pet. Before you can run around on it though, it will have to move on its own. When you run around on it, its energy will run out, but that shouldn't really be a problem considering you won't be mining many gems for a single commission. Energy starts at zero when you join a lobby, and will take five minutes to charge up to a hundred. You don't have to have the pet summoned for it to gain energy after you join a lobby, but if you summon it, and use it, and then despawn it again, it will not gain energy unless it's summoned. A lot of these gemstones have really high breaking power requirements, but a Piccanimbus 2000 can break all of them except for Topaz. For Topaz commissions, simply avoid them and use the other slot that provides the same type of commissions until you are Heart of the Mountain Tier 4, when you can purchase the Gemstone Drill LT522 for around 6 million coins, which is the most expensive thing so far, but is well worth it. 
If you can't afford the drill, I would highly recommend grinding something like zealots or sand until you can. If you're particularly poor, you can make the decision to only use the gemstone drill LT522 and entirely abandon the pick and embuses. I wouldn't entirely recommend this, but it is a viable strategy if you absolutely hate zealot grinding. For the chest looter commission, treasure chests can be found and looted in structures, but also spawn when you mine hardstone at a default chance of 1 out of 500. For the Team Treasurate Member Slayer Commission, Team Treasurate Members are enemies that spawn in some Mithril Deposit structures, so for this commission I would recommend searching throughout the Mithril Deposits for a structure that spawns them. For the Sludge Slayer Commission, Sludges spawn a lot like Team Treasurate Members, just in the jungle. So, for this one, I'd recommend looking through the jungle for structures that spawn Sludges. Then, for the Yogg Slayer Commission, Yogg spawn in structures in its respective biome, the Magma Fields, as well. The best structure to look for them is in Khazad Doom, which Bal spawns in, but more on that later. The structure is so big that you can probably easily find it by asking for coordinates or running around the Magma Fields tunnels. On a small tangent, the Magma Fields has a pretty deadly heat system to new players. The Magma Fields heat system slowly adds heat on your scoreboard, and when it gets to 100 you will start to take damage. Leaving the magma fields will slowly decrease your heat, and drinking water bottles will decrease your heat massively. The water bottles are obviously the really cheap option, but you can also buy a bow pet of any rarity or any level from the auction house, which will provide heat immunity when equipped. So, have a way to deal with heat. Then for the Automaton Slayer Commission, you go to the Precursor Remnants, look around for literally like two seconds, stop asking for cords to the Precursor City, I can't with you people! and kill automatons in the Precursor City, or really any structure that spawns them, they're not uncommon. If you die to automatons, I'd recommend taking a break from mining for a while and get yourself in a position where you can easily kill them. If you can zealot farm already, you should be fine. The Goblin Slayer Commission functions pretty much exactly the same to the Team Treasurite Member Slayer, where all you have to do is walk around the Goblin Holdout and find an admittedly kinda rare spot which won't spawn many goblins, but it will get the job done eventually. Finally, the Thist Slayer Commission can be completed by mining Amethyst gemstones in the jungle, which spawn Thists at a 20% rate upon breaking one. Now, for the other commission slots, which, as a reminder, will only give the boss Corleone Slayer Commission or a specific type of Crystal Hunter Commission. Let's start with Corleone. Boss Corleone generates in these two structures shown on screen, which are both relatively rare structures to find in the Mithril Deposits. He has 1 million health and decent damage, making him actually pretty hard to take out. Both of these structures will also generate Team Treasurite members. People ask for cords to Corleone extremely often, because he can be really annoying to find on your own if you have bad luck. Crystal Hunter Commissions require you to collect certain crystals from different biomes of the map, which can be placed in the Crystal Nucleus to generate a loot bundle. The Jade Crystal can be obtained by going to the Mines of Devon, a relatively big structure that will randomly generate in the Mithril Deposits, and talking to one of the Keepers. They will then give you a Metal Detector, which you can use at the bottom of the Mines of Devon to locate treasure. There's a Distance Indicator that will appear above your hotbar, and it will tell you how far you are away from the Treasure Chest. If ever you can't open the Treasure Chest, try left-clicking it. 20% of the time, the Treasure Chests will drop one of four scavenged items, those being the Scavenged Lapis Sword, Scavenged Golden Hammer, Scavenged Emerald Hammer, and the Scavenged Diamond Axe. If you turn all of these into their respective keepers as shown on screen, you are awarded with the Jade Crystal in the center. To receive the Jade Crystal, simply right-click it. The Amber Crystal can be obtained by first finding the Goblin Queen's Den, another big structure that generates in the Goblin Holdout. Then, once you've found the Goblin Queen's Den, look around near the Goblin Queen's Den for a structure that looks like the one on screen, and exchange three Goblin Eggs for the King's Scent Potion effect for 20 minutes. Then, make your way back to the Goblin Queen's Den and simply go inside the structure as shown on screen and grab the Amber Crystal by right-clicking it. The Topaz Crystal can be obtained by going to Khazad Doom, which I talked about how to find earlier in the video, and killing Bal. Bal is a giant magma cube in the center, which takes hit-based damage, meaning that your hits will only ever do one damage. 
Bal has a total of 200 health, and different types of dialogue in the chat will tell you his health. Once Bal is defeated, the Topaz Crystal will spawn, which can be promptly collected by right-clicking on it. A Sapphire Crystal can be found in the Precursor City, which, again, takes literally two seconds to find. Now, this crystal isn't difficult at all, but it is expensive. You have to give Professor Robot all six of the automaton parts as shown on screen, which have a 1 out of 50 drop rates from automatons in the Precursor City, and 1 out of 100 from automatons anywhere else. It's important to note that each part has its own drop rate, so the chance of getting any automaton part is basically 1 out of 8.3 per automaton in the Precursor City. Anyways, you can buy the six parts you need to give Professor Robot from the auction house. They are the Robotron Reflector, Synthetic Heart, Control Switch, FTX 3070, Electron Transmitter, and the Super Light Motor. In total, all of these parts cost about 750,000 coins, which can vary a decent bit. Finally, the Amethyst Crystal can be obtained by going to the Jungle Temple, a big structure in the jungle. You will notice it easily because it disables your potion effects. Then, give the Kalhuiki Door Guardian a jungle key like I'm showing on screen here, which can be purchased from the auction house for around 25,000 coins. Then, you'll have to do a parkour, which at the end of it you get the Amethyst Crystal by, once again, right-clicking on it. One thing to note is that you can use wishing compasses to easily find these structures, which spawn relatively commonly in chests, both ones generated from you mining hardstone and ones found in structures. When you right-click a wishing compass, it will take one out of three uses, it breaks after you use all three, and will generate a particle trail to the structure you need. A wishing compass will lead you to the Mines of Devon if you are in the Mithril Deposits, there is a Mines of Devon in that lobby, sometimes it won't spawn because it would conflict with other structures, and if you don't have the Jade Crystal. It'll lead you to the Goblin Queen's Den if you have the King's Scent already, are in the Goblin Holdout, and don't have the Amber Crystal. It'll also lead you to the King if you don't already have the King's Scent and are in the Goblin Holdout. It'll lead you to Khazad Doom if you are in the Magma Fields and don't already have the Topaz Crystal. It'll lead you to the Precursor City if you are in the Precursor Remnants and don't have the Sapphire Crystal already. I really wouldn't recommend wasting Wish and Compass uses on finding a structure that's already ridiculously easy to find, though. Finally, it will lead you to the Jungle Temple if you have a Jungle Key, don't already have the Amethyst Crystal, and are in the jungle. It will lead you to Odawa, an NPC who you can purchase a Jungle Key from if you are in the jungle and don't already have a Jungle Key. Although, after all of this information about Corleone and the different gemstone crystals, it is extremely important to note that if you want the highest possible efficiency, you should be completely avoiding these commissions. Since they only appear in slots 2 and 4, you can just use slots 1 and 3 to do much faster and much less expensive commissions. The only reason I included them in this video is to make sure that people aren't confused about it, and to provide more reasoning as to why these commissions are inefficient to do. Now, there are two methods you can use to go about doing these commissions. You can either set up a lobby with tunnels to every location you need, or swap lobbies every time you can't find a place after a little bit of searching. Really, this comes down to preference of what you want to do. Setting up lobbies will eventually make your efficiency much higher than constantly swapping, although they do take a good while to set up. If you don't have too much to play every day, I'd recommend swapping lobbies instead of setting them up, or if you just hate setting up lobbies. Overall though, the more efficient is setting up lobbies, by far. If you want another guide that shows specific coordinates and whatnot for some gemstone patches and provides some more insight, you can check out Dreadlig's Crystal Hollows Commission Guide linked in the description. Finally, we are done with the Crystal Hollows overview, and I can get into what to do at every Heart of the Mountain milestone. At Heart of the Mountain Tier 4, you'll want to go for Efficient Miner and Seasoned Mineman. You can put a bit of powder into either of these, but they don't really matter that much. Efficient Miner can be useful for clearing out gemstones faster, and Seasoned Mineman just gives you more mining experience. At Heart of the Mountain Tier 5, you'll want to purchase nothing. Yeah, nothing. I would recommend you unlock Vol and Fortunate, but you can't purchase those until you're Heart of the Mountain Tier 6. If you'll have time to reset your Heart of the Mountain, a button in the bottom right of the Heart of the Mountain menu, that resets your Heart of the Mountain and refunds all powder and tokens of the mountain with a day-long cooldown. You can go for Mining Madness for a bit of extra speed and fortune, and Sky Mall for a 22.7% chance at a reduced pickaxe cooldown, which actually works in the Crystal Hollows. One thing that you do gain access to regardless is the Peak of the Mountain, but it isn't really worth touching that right now. Even though it gives you another commission slot, that one will just give you Crystal Hunter and Boss Corleone Slayer commissions, which you'll be avoiding anyways. 
The extra tokens of the mountain don't mean much either. At Heart of the Mountain Tier 6, you'll want to get Mole, which helps a good bit with Hardstone and Treasure Chest Commissions, Fortunate, which doesn't really mean much, and Great Explorer, which helps a bunch with Treasure Chest Commissions. The final token can go to Mining Madness, but it really doesn't matter much at all. You can also purchase the Gemstone Gauntlet at this stage if you want, which will increase your mining speed significantly, and can also break every single gemstone without ever running out of fuel or uses. It also has an advantage in that it has a Topaz slot for extra pristine if you want. Finally, at Heart of the Mountain Tier 7, you've finished your journey. You should now get into powder grinding, which will be my next video. I will say though, your current tree should be somewhat fine for getting into powder mining, though you'll want to get the ability to pick Obulus, and when you start you should really upgrade the peak of the mountain for the extra tokens of the mountain. You also want to focus perks like Powder Buff, Great Explorer, and Mole. Alright, that includes my Heart of the Mountain guide. I hope you enjoyed this video or it helped you in some way. Also, don't forget to subscribe. This video took me ages, and ages is honestly an understatement. I'm not very fast at editing, but oh my goodness, this took me so long. <laughs>